there have been several studies published about this recently, and I'm going to drop a link in the chat here for you about a good overview of that gut-brain axis for those of you who still may be skeptical. Um, so we'll get you a, a place to go look for some more information. But I just want to briefly say that we have known for a long time that many gut conditions are associated with migraine. So for example, helicobacter pylori, right? H. pylori. It turns out ulcers are actually an infection caused by H. pylori. We know that there's a higher incidence of migraine in people who have that, and that when you treat the H. pylori with antibiotics, the migraines get better. Celiac disease, another great example. Um, that's, you know, of course, an allergy to gluten. When you treat these people with a gluten-free diet, their headaches get better. So um, those things are, there are very clear links there that we've known for a long time. Also irritable bowel syndrome, um, which is probably going to turn out to be related to leaky gut once we understand it better. Um, we know that those people have a much higher incidence of headaches as well. I think that gut issues are one of the um, the big pieces of the iceberg under the surface um, that conventional medicine hasn't tapped into yet uh, that is very treatable and fixable. And when you pay attention to gut health, brain health gets better and migraines uh, drop. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Well, one of the things that, you know, we look at uh, from a naturopathic standpoint, you know, this is something that we've found is a basis for a lot of chronic issues, not just migraine, not just irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's, you know, those kinds of things, but also taking a look at things like rheumatoid arthritis and autoimmune conditions. Um, we treat skin conditions from the gut. So if someone comes in with psoriasis or severe eczema, the very first thing that we do from a naturopathic standpoint is we treat the gut and the gut microbiome first, and then we work on, you know, symptomatic relief uh, for topical things for, for the skin. And the reason why is because we know uh, from a lot of studies over many, many years that even though conventional medicine hasn't necessarily made that connection, that's something that is kind of drilled into us from the very beginning of year one of naturopathic, naturopathic medical school is that the gut plays such a huge role in a ton of different things. So I've looked at uh, a lot of the research around the gut microbiome specifically and how that has an impact into our the health of our gut. Um, I mean, surprisingly, you know, as Dr. Barrett said, there's uh, our gut, our gut actually will make serotonin. Those, those little bacteria in there, they make our neurotransmitters, they make hormones, they actually make vitamins that we can't get from food, like they convert it into a usable form for us. If we don't have the right bacteria makeup in our gut, we're missing out on all of those benefits. Um, there are multiple studies that again, I can also link some of those some of them are older. One of them did a great job in uh, one from 2014, did a great job of summarizing the effects, the positive effects that a good gut bacteria makeup can have on the immune system. It helps to modulate it. So you don't have this super hyperactive immune system. It helps to uh, increase neuro and balance neurotransmitter production. It helps with um, general inflammation. Um, and it also helps to actually uh, balance and modulate the central nervous system. So, uh, and inflammation related to that, as Dr. Barrett had mentioned. So, it, it, this is a hugely underutilized uh, modality to work as part of a whole body approach to migraines. This is hugely undervalued. And so, that's one of the reasons we wanted to kind of focus in on this. So let's talk a little bit about what the gut microbiome is in case this is, you know, you might've heard it, but not know what it is. We have billions and billions and billions, actually maybe trillions of bacteria in our gut, uh, specifically in the large intestine. And those bacteria help us to essentially break down our food, helps us with nutrient absorption, helps us, as I mentioned, to um, produce certain things such as our certain neurotransmitters, um, helps us to detox. I mean, all kinds of different things. When we take antibiotics, that disrupts that good microbiome. When we eat foods that have been um, you, that they have used antibiotics in, that disrupts our gut microbiome. When we use uh, other types of um, medications and or uh, you know chemicals that are in our food, that also disrupts our gut microbiome. So our healthy makeup of bacteria that we should be having, ends up becoming skewed and we start getting more infectious uh, 
bacteria in there that then will contribute to inflammation. It will contribute to some of these imbalances. And over time, if we're not supporting the good bacteria, the bad bacteria can actually take over. And then you can end up with an actual infection but more commonly what happens is you just have this imbalance where the good bacteria that's anti-inflammatory and providing us with nutrients that we need is replaced by bacteria that is pro-inflammatory, maybe increases our histamine response and increases things that cause us inflammation that can trigger migraines. And then we start noticing that we get more susceptible. We don't get an, as many of our vitamins that we need. We don't get, uh, we are utilizing a lot more of the nutrition in just fighting the inflammation caused by the bacteria that is out of balance. And so by working on helping to support that healthy gut microbiome, we actually can have a huge systemic effect, reducing inflammation and overall feeling better so that you know, our, our bathtub, as I say, or the iceberg is becoming smaller, right? We're, our bathtub isn't overflowing to the point we're having symptoms or the iceberg is shrinking. So we don't have such a big underlying issue and we can start seeing the, 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 the things changing, right? So, so Dr. Barrett, that was kind of a, that was a long-winded explanation here. What tips do you have for helping to support the gut and inflammation in the gut that you utilize? Well, you know, I really look at it as kind of a three-step process. So first of all, stop eating things that are irritating your gut, which you can learn through elimination diets, food allergy testing, a variety of ways, or you can just follow standard advice. Um, second, you need to support the gut. There, there's really, there's only one cell that stands between the contents of your intestines and the rest of your body. That's a very important little cell, right? Um, so what the microbiome that you were talking about that helps us in so many ways, another thing it does is that it secretes a mucosal layer over that one cell that helps protect it. So you can help those good bacteria with things like probiotics, fiber, you know, things that are good for the lining. So I think it's, that's the second step is to help your gut heal. And then the third step is to help your body detox. Um, we all know that we live in a very toxic world. We need to get those chemical, those toxins out, whether it's mold or mercury or whatever, who not, you know, stuff we do, don't even know about. Um, and you can't do that until the gut is healthy. You have to have a healed inner lining, otherwise you're pulling toxins and then they're just going right back into your system. So I think I view it as a three-step process. Stop irritating it, help your body heal the lining of the gut, and then three, help your body eliminate toxins that may have accumulated during the time when you had the leaky gut, including inflammation which is a big player, of course, for migraine, because the inflammation yes. that comes out of your gut definitely goes to your brain and causes more trouble with inflammation there. Yeah, I love that that um, you specifically want to address. So I, I've, I've heard so many times people stop at that first part, right? They stop at the elimination. They reduce the foods that irritate their gut. And that's an absolutely essential step. But if you stop there, then there are just going to be other foods that you start getting irritated by. And then suddenly we're pigeonholed into eating like three different foods. Right. Right. So I think that that phase two is so important to continue on to, which is that gut healing. And as you mentioned, probiotics, um, one of the studies that I saw was very interesting. They showed that people who ate 40 or more plant-based foods every week had a much better uh, had much lower inflammation and a much healthier makeup of gut bacteria. And that's mm -hmm. all they did. They ate 40 different plants. So what does that look like? Seeds and nuts, nut butters, things like that. Um, obviously fruits and vegetables count. Grains, uh, we're talking whole grains, right? So like brown rice or potatoes, yams, some of those can be inflammatory for some people. So, you know, do that if that's appropriate for you. Um, and then also taking a look at nuts and, and beans and things like that, as long as those aren't triggers for you. And when I first heard 40 different foods, I was like, that seems like an insanely high number. But I've actually recently tried doing that myself and rotating through different foods. And it's actually very easy to do. We have a lot more plant-based foods than we think about if we're conscious about eating those plant-based foods. And so that would be the number one thing that I work on with my clients from a dietary perspective is understanding what does this food diversity look like? 
And how do I get 40 different? Cause I'm not certainly not eating 40 servings of vegetables a, a week. I'm sorry. I'm just not, I love that. <laughs> but there are ways that you could sneak them into foods that you don't even think about it. And it's still beneficial. So you don't have to just live a life of, you know, eating salads or, you know, just munching on raw vegetables. That's not what this looks like. So, all right. Well, uh, that wraps it up for us for today. So uh, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions for either Dr. Barrett or myself, please put them in the chat below the video and we will be happy to respond.